Good evening. We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. And when first first order of business we have is Superintendent Conments. Good evening. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. I uh, hope everyone had a uh, nice spring break. Um, people were, had the opportunity to relax and, and recharge as we come down the home stretch of the last uh, five or six weeks of school. Uh, lots, of, lots of fun things are going on, lots of exciting things. Uh, do want to update the board. Uh, Maysville Elementary School last week uh, was named a National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence. Um, that's our second school. Um, that we've had named uh, with that honor this year. Uh, East Elementary School was also named earlier in the year. Really excited for, for that staff and the hard work that um, is taking place there every day and at all of our schools. Um, our board meeting Monday night will be in the auditorium uh, due to a number of student recognitions. We've also listed the graduation dates uh, for you as well. Uh, earlier today, we found out Lily Farrell is a senior at Jackson County High School, was named a Georgia Scholar. Uh, really excited about that honor um, for her, and uh, also really excited, Mr. Wester this evening will present a strategic plan update, uh, and we're putting a bow on that and getting close to the to the finish finish line. Uh, a year of work and a year of community participation, board participation, student, staff, parent participation, uh, and really excited to have that um, almost finished and almost board approved. Uh, and that I feel like that's a, a great plan for us. Uh, as we head into the next five years, uh, lots of lots of things going on. You'll hear a little bit tonight about enrollment, and you'll see those numbers. And we continue to, you know, it's it's pretty atypical to enroll students during the middle of the school year, uh, but you know we saw a boost after spring break uh, of kids that came in on the Monday after spring break. I think close to 30, um, and it just yeah, uh, pretty uh, pretty atypical uh, for us as a school district historically. So. Uh, Really want to say thank you to our staff at schools and teachers, parapros, and, and, and all of those individuals who contribute to uh, making sure that every kid that walks through our door, uh, whether they've been here their whole life or they just walked in the door, feel welcome and, and encouraged um, and provide them with a great, a great education and a great experience with our school district. So without further ado, Dr. Hardigree is up first. Well, good evening. Good to see everyone. It is that busy stretch in all of our areas, I know, but we are excited in teaching and learning just to kind of head into that home stretch. And one of the things that we're preparing for, of course, is assessment season. If you'll um, roll our slides forward. Before, um, so first of all, to give you a little bit of an update, just as we head into these last six weeks, the main thing we want to do is build confidence in our students, that they are well prepared for all of the assessments that are coming. We want to make the most of this last six to seven weeks and make sure that we're really using that great data that we have to drive instruction. So that's really our focus with our um, leaders is, is making sure that we maximize our instructional time. We also at the same time want to get everybody well prepared and ready for those assessments so that we can just perform at our very best. So we've um, put on our website some resources for our parents and our students. We also have um, the updated assessment calendar on our website, but just to put it here for your, um, just so that you have an idea of what's going on in our buildings as we head into this season. Um, of course, Martha and Sandy have been hard at work for a long time preparing our leaders for this, and, and they are. They're well prepared. But we've um, just really trying to establish that culture, too, in our students to expect that high performance and to be confident in knowing that they are prepared. So um, that's really been our, our focus as we head into assessment season and our district staff will be assigned to schools, will be out in schools all during those end of course and end of um, grade assessments to just make sure that everything is running smoothly. Any questions about assessment? All right, one other slide I wanted to share with you and this um, actually just came out, if you'll roll to the next one for me. Our um, pathway graduation rates were just released, and the state kind of put this together. That they haven't put this together for us this way in the past. As we know, students who are involved in a pathway, they tend to be very focused. They're, you know, we're, they're tapping into those passions. They see where um, they're going for their future. So this is an area of our strategic plan where we want to continue to in increase our um, pathway completers. We have pretty strong data there. We have 76.95% of our students completing a pathway but this is just the graduation rate for those and so it's really it just reinforces 
the fact that we know that we want to continue to really um, make sure that our students get plugged in. So 100% for our advanced academic pathways. Um, and, and so that's, of course, we would expect that. World language, 100%. Fine arts, 99%, a little bit above the state there. And then our CTA um, pathway uh, graduation rate completer there at 99%. So it's just awesome. It's just an affirmation of um, what we know helps our students to stay focused and um, perform at a high level. So we just wanted to share that with you. And then the other highlight we wanted to share is a fun um, highlight. Come on up, Ms. Tunnell. As you know, it's been the first year of the STEAM bus, and the STEAM bus is everybody's favorite. When they see the STEAM bus roll up at school, it's an exciting day. And so Ms. Tunnell is going to share a little bit about the successes of the STEAM bus this year and just kind of plans as we move forward. Thanks so much for giving me a chance to share about this program. Um, so I, this year, those of you who know me, I've been in Jackson County for a very long time, extremely invested. Um, this is my first year as the science and STEAM specialist for the district. And when I took on the role, this became one of my babies, which is really exciting. Um, and I'll let you go ahead and go to the next slide. So in this first year um, with the bus, I don't know if you've had a chance to be on the bus, but if you haven't, please figure out where it is. If you have time, come join us, hang out with the kids. Um, our, we had, I had really three goals. I wanted to uh, develop and implement and facilitate some integrated lessons that it would integrate science and ELA. Um, we wanted some embedded professional learning to be a part of that, and then we wanted equitable access to all kids in the elementary schools. So I kind of quickly came up with this schedule. Um, shout out to the transportation department that has gotten that bus to these schools consistently throughout the year. Um, we started off the program with just me being the facilitator of the, the lessons. When I would be going to the schools, I was doing that two days a week. We were able to get Risa Brookshire to come out of retirement. She's also doing that. So now she does it two days a week. I do it one day of the week, so now we're up to three days. That way I can still try to do all of the other things that are involved with my job. You guys can go ahead to the next one. Um, a big part of this is that whole integration piece with science and literacy. Um, all of the lessons that I design have, uh, they're based in the science standards for the grade level standards, but there's also a literacy standard that's embedded also in those lessons. I brought a few of the tubs, which later if you've done and you want to walk by, I brought some of those. Um, I stock the bus with these tubs so that even when the bus is there, if we are not there, if I'm not there, if Risa's not there, and the teachers want to get on the bus, um, they have access to all the lessons, all the slides, the books, the materials and everything is on there for them um, because again we want we would love it for them just to feel comfortable enough to come and do that but in this first year it's been a lot of us facilitating and them being a part of that so it's been fantastic and it's a lot of fun next slide please I just wanted you to get a glimpse of how it looks the bus rolls up um, it's an amazing situation it's like an outdoor classroom um, weather permitting we try to hold the classes out there we have everything we need to have class all the technology um, all of those kinds of things the kids are always fired up when they get on the bus um, because it's you know they, they expect it to look like what they normally think a bus looks like and so they're really excited about that um, we've seen pretty much every elementary classroom in the, in the whole county since we've been there. Next slide. Um, everything that we do, again, is hands-on. We, we know about building background knowledge is really important for literacy skills. So what we try to do is, is create these experiences so that kids have these hands-on experiences so that when they're reading about something later, they'll be like, oh, I've done that before. I, I, I have a connection to that. Um, this is an example of fifth graders. Um, we are in the classroom for this one because they were doing some work with chemistry. Um, this is at South Jackson here with the kids doing their shadows outside with the bus. And this I had to include because it's my favorite picture of, of all. Um, I wrote a lesson called What's in the Soil? And we explore things in the soil and every kid gets to hold an earthworm while they hear the story about wonderful worms. Um, and if you zoom into her, she has these pink fingernails and then she's holding a worm at the same time. I'm like, yes! Um, <laughs> <laughs> it makes my heart so happy. Um, so it's just really, I think, a great experience for the kids, and it provides something they might not be able to do in their classroom. Next slide. Um, another piece that I told you about is embedded professional learning. 
Um, we really want teachers to be with the kids. They don't drop them off and leave them with me or Risa. They come. Um, they're there with us. They're either in the classroom with us or they're out at the bus with us. And we really encourage them to get involved in the lessons as well. It's more like a co-teaching model is what we're we're hoping for. So these are just some examples of some of the teachers that have been there. Um, some schools uh, have been using the bus when I'm not with them, which has been really encouraging. This is Casey Sheridan. Um, she's done a whole bunch of things with the bus um, and her students, but also with her Lego League Club, which we'll talk about on the next slide. Um, we have some program feedback. I sent out a feedback form. These are just some of the things that the teachers said that the students said about the program that they themselves feel. Um, it really is supporting their standards. They love that. It gives a little bit of background knowledge sometimes before they introduce the science content and then sometimes afterwards it provides that extra support for that. They do the feedback they got about improving the program. Most of the feedback they gave was like we want it more. So that's how I got to figure out how to make that happen. Um, so that was really good. And we got, I think, one more slide. Um, this is really exciting to me, too. Um, when we think about broadening our impact and really the name, you know me. If you know me for a long time, I am all about making a name for Jackson County and Jackson County kids. Um, we had a chance, again, thanks to the Transportation Department, we took the bus to the Gale Conference in Athens. Um, and it was a big hit, and people want one after they saw ours. Um, <laughs> we took the bus to Commerce. They had a pro, uh, program for all the students in the region who are in the future teachers uh, pathway um, and so these are some kids from another school I don't know what school it is but they came out and I was one of the rotations which was awesome to try to get them excited um, gum springs actually used the bus as their innovative project for their Lego League um, and they actually went to state and, to, and placed there um, they wanted to gamify the bus and what's really exciting is because of their inspiration and what they wanted to do with the bus we have applied for a grant uh, with the state, and I, I've got fingers crossed here because we are in the final running for that grant to be able to expand and gamify the bus based on kids' visions for what this bus could become. So we're, you can cross your fingers for us. We're going to be interviewed next week, and we're going to do it where the bus is so that they can really see it, and hopefully we'll get approval for that and be able to expand the program. So and that, any questions? When, when you all go to the school, do you just, are you just there for one day? This year it's there for the week, so oh, okay. Dwayne's team will move the bus actually tomorrow morning to North Jackson. It's at East right now. It'll go to North Jackson, and then we'll, it'll be there from Monday through essentially Thursday um, right now. Next year we'll probably expand the amount of time that it's at a school, and mainly that's based on that grant we wrote because we're really going to focus on academic vocabulary, and so we want to have it spend a little bit more time at a school, at which they'll be thrilled to transportation part of their health. Um, but that's really the, the goal is it's there for, there for that many days. And the teachers can sign up. So I send out a schedule and teachers sign up and tell me what lesson they want. Um, that's how it works. We've done, I've done pre-K through five, and we've done some self-contained. I do, we do seven classes a day, so we're looking at about, you can hit about 21 classes in that week, um, unless there's something going on. So some schools do it differently. I let the administrators decide how they wanted to do that. If they wanted to say th this time it comes, it's kindergarten and first, or however, it just depends on the size of the school. Great question. Thank you. Any other? Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Snell. I do want to say, uh, Thank you for that presentation, Ms. Snell. I also want to give a big shout out to, to you and Dr. Peacock. Um, we hosted a district-wide uh, Science Olympiad here at Empower, and so all of our schools participated. Um, I think we're probably one of the only systems uh, in our area where all every school has a team. Um, and then we also, for the second year in a row, we hosted the um, regional Science Olympiad for all the schools school districts in our area at Jackson County High School. So um, really cool to, to host it. Um, but there's a lot of work that takes place that nobody's ever going to see. So uh, thank you, Ms. Snell. Thank you, Dr. Peacock, for doing that. Really appreciate it. So all right, I guess there's no human resources and PR today. Um, they get the night off. Um, we are definitely hiring, and great things are happening. So I'll answer both of those questions right there. Uh, Mr. Wester, student support. We knew Wester was going to have to take a long time tonight, so we gave PR and HR a little bit of the time off. Amanda's giving me three minutes, so we'll see how this goes. Well, you got to talk fast. That's something's going to happen. All right. Good evening, uh, board. Just to touch base on a few items. Uh, enrollment uh, is still happening. Uh, as of the end of March, prior to spring break, our enrollment was at 
10,780 students, which is up 680 from our ending enrollment last year, 6.73% 7, growth as of that point. And we've, according to some of our schools, that we're enrolling every minute. And uh, that, could, that number is quite possibly over 10.8 at this point um, as we get uh, towards the end of the school year. Um, certainly, you can see from, from that that the, the biggest growth is at Jackson County High School. Uh, they are up 287 students over the end of last year at this point. It's a 15.84% growth at that particular institution. Our elementary schools are also growing quite rapidly. Uh, the, the biggest number there is at North Jackson. Um, they're up 65 students over last year, which is 9.39% for that population. They're almost 10% growth right now. Um, and just behind them is East Jackson Elementary at almost 9% growth with uh, 54 students above last year's number. Um, Maysville is also up at almost seven and a half. Um, and so is West Jackson Elementary. So we're seeing growth at, at different levels uh, across the county and even on the east side where uh, we, we weren't necessarily seeing this, the, the volume of growth, uh, we're seeing some significant growth at several of our elementary schools. So that's something for us to keep our eye on as we move forward. Uh, and One of the things I do wanna say that, that's really important, um, if you know uh, of families in our area that have kinder or rising kindergartners. Um, it would help us out tremendously the quicker we get those students registered for school next year uh, for our planning purposes. And, and there's a lot of moving parts that are involved in personnel and facilities, um, but it would help us. So uh, continue to register those kindergartners. Absolutely. So if we can move to the next uh, the strategic planning piece. Uh, we have, uh, We've been engaged over the last year uh, in a process, right, uh, to um, revise and update our five-year strategic plan. And uh, this actually began with you uh, meeting with uh, Lenita Jackson and uh, Dr. Steve Barker uh, from the GSBA, who we have partnered with, right, to help us to uh, implement this process. That happened last January. Uh, and uh, you guys did a SWOT analysis, if you remember, which is talking about the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that Jackson County faces at that point in time. So your input uh, was gathered at that time. And then we had an opportunity, uh, as you can see, go to the next slide if you don't mind, um, to then uh, begin the process of including our community, right, in those thoughts. And so we had a, a meeting in September where we invited the community to come to Empower and to share those same types of ideas. What were the strengths? What are some of the weaknesses? What are the opportunities and threats that Jackson County faces? Uh, we, were, we were very grateful that we could have over 200 people that actually came that night uh, and participated in small groups and shared out uh, what they believe the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities and, and threats were to Jackson County. In conjunction with that, this, the Georgia School Board Association gave us a survey to send out to our community for those folks who maybe weren't able to attend the meeting. We had over 300 participants uh, who then responded to those same types of questions via survey. All of that data was then collected and analyzed by the GSBA, uh, and they gave us back a report, right? And that report is what we was the basis, right, for us to then begin thinking how do we need to address the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that Jackson County faces uh, based off that input from our community. And so we planned a meeting uh, with uh, the community that took place in December. It was called our planning team meeting. We had over 60 participants in this room and 30 of them were members of our community, students, parents, community members, and leaders. And the other 30 were representatives of schools, uh, teachers, uh, school administration, and some district leaders as well. And within that framework of that meeting, uh, we were able to start to look at what, it, what was, you know, how had we framed our vision, our mission, and our core beliefs in the past, or were there revisions that we needed to make, or the things that we were wanting to maybe adjust within that framework? And then what would be the performance objectives and goal areas that we really felt needed to be addressed in the next five years to help Jackson County to move forward and do the very best we can for the students and families that we represent? So within that framework of that meeting, we then formed some action teams. And those action teams met in February to review the goal areas and the performance objectives that came out of the planning team meeting. Um, and uh, that information was then collected and we brought that together and shared it out again with the planning team. So the same folks that came together from the community and from the schools, we met together just last month and uh, shared out uh, the basic ideas of what our strategic plan would be. Uh, and it was met with, with great uh, positivity. Right, that uh, we were heading in the right direction with that. 
which brings us now to tonight. And what we'd like to do tonight is to share with you uh, what uh, this collaboration has brought forth, right? The goal areas that we believe uh, and the performance objectives that we believe will help us to move forward as a system uh, to meet the needs of our students in our community. And so um, the first thing we did was look at our mission and vision and, uh, and, and come up with some ideas that we really felt would, would drive our work. And so uh, the mission of Jackson County Schools is to strive for continuous improvement and excellence in achievement, performance, and life preparation for all students. There was a ton of feedback on our mission and that it needed to include preparation, right, uh, for life, and that we want to make sure our kids are ready. We want to we want to be excellent, but not just in academics. We want to be excellent in everything that we do, um, and we want to achieve, right? We want our students to achieve. We want our, our system to achieve. And so that's what we're looking at, continuous improvement and striving for that in everything that we do. So if we do something in Jackson County, we want to be the best at it. And whether that's uh, you know, a club, whether that's a sport, whether that's an art, whether that's academics, we want to be the very best. And so that's what that mission does. And so as we think about our work each and every day, if this is our mission, then we're striving to be the very best every day at what we do. That leads us to our vision. So if our mission is to be the best every day, then our vision is what do we want to be as we're moving forward. And the vision that we've come up with for Jackson County is that we will excel nationally in academics, arts, and athletics, fostering the development of well-rounded individuals who contribute positively to society. And uh, certainly if you think about the, the well-rounded individuals we want to create, the citizens that we want to create, if we can achieve that vision, we're doing some great things. So that's the goal, right? So every day we're going to work to be excellent and move towards that vision which then leads us to our core beliefs. And this is a critical piece, right? If you're gonna join Jackson County as a staff member, if you're gonna be part of what we're doing, then we want you to agree to these particular core beliefs, that all students can learn in a safe, engaging, challenging, and supportive learning environment. That school, family, and community collaboration are essential to continuous improvement. That an essential function of school is to prepare students to be independent and critical thinkers, problem solvers, and successful lifelong learners. That providing students with opportunities to learn, develop, and excel outside of core academic areas promotes connections that are critical to a positive learning environment. We had so much feedback about not just focusing on academics, right? What are we doing to help our people, our young people to feel connected to the school? And that comes through our extracurricular activities, through the arts, through athletics, through clubs. And any way that we can help them to feel connected, we believe that's a critical core belief for us, is that we want to make those connections possible for our students. Um, we also uh, talked about that it is the duty of the district to be responsible stewards of public funds and resources while putting the needs of students first in everything that we do. And that the retention and recruitment of quality workforce is paramount to student success bringing in and keeping the very best people we can to work with our young students is a critical piece of what we wanted to do. Um, and so if we believe those are our core beliefs, then our goal areas need to align with those beliefs, right, and with our vision and mission. And so the next slide talks about what our goal areas will be. Um, the first goal area is that we will focus on student achievement and readiness. Goal area two is that we want to make sure that we're focused on organizational and operational effectiveness. Goal area three is that we want to make sure that we have a quality workforce that also focuses on professional growth for all of our people. Goal area four is that we want to be focused on family and community engagement. And then the last goal area, goal area five, is we're going to try our best to strive to create a positive culture and climate within all of our schools and within our system. And then that leads us to the last portion of, of what we're sharing tonight, which are the performance objectives that tie into each of those goal areas. And there are three of them. Um, and so uh, as you look at the student achievement and readiness, we want to make sure that we increase the mastery of standards in all content areas through high quality curriculum, instruction, and assessment. We want to increase student engagement, and we want to increase college, career, and life readiness for all of our students. And then you have some additional pieces that you can look at under each of these goal areas. I encourage you to look at those and, and see how we're looking at how we want to measure those things and what our initiatives are, which you have in, as a continued piece. Under the organizational and operational effectiveness, we want to implement effective and efficient organizational processes across the board in each of our departments. We want to maintain fiscal responsibility and accountability in everything that we do. And we want to allocate resources to maintain a safe and secure environment for students and staff. Safety is a major priority for us. 
Under our quality workforce and professional growth area, we want to focus on recruiting highly effective staff for every position, retaining dedicated high performing professionals in every position, and increasing our focus on developing and supporting our staff in all positions, making sure that we're helping them to grow within their roles. Under our family and community engagement goal area, we want to focus on increasing effective family and community engagement, utilizing varying methods to increase internal and external communication, making sure we're getting our message out and that our community is aware of what's happening in our schools and how they can help and be part of it. And we want to build mutually beneficial relationships with all of our stakeholders and partners, making sure that our community feels and has opportunity to connect with our schools and to be part of what we're doing in Jackson County. Under the positive culture and climate area, we want to make sure that we're creating, maintaining a safe, welcoming, inclusive, and supportive environment for our students, our staff, our parents, and our communities. We want to make sure when people come into a Jackson County school, they feel like they're welcome, right, and that they have a place. We also want to promote social and emotional support for all of our students and our staff, making sure that they have a place to go if there's issues or things that they need help with. And then lastly, we want to establish and maintain clear and high expectations of excellence for our students and for our staff so that that vision and mission, right, are always at the forefront of what we're doing each and every day. So this is the, the basis, right, of our strategic plan for the years 2024 through 2029. We're very excited to bring this to you. We're, we believe it's gotten great feedback from everyone that's been involved in helping you create it. Um, it certainly was not created in a bubble, I can tell you that. It's been, it's been uh, a ton of collaboration with a ton of great folks. And I uh, encourage you to please look that over, uh, look over the other parts that have been shared, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to, to talk with you about any of it. Um, our goal would be for us to uh, ask you to consider approving this strategic plan at the next meeting in May. And I uh, want to try to move forward after that point and uh, begin using this as the foundation for everything that we'll work on in the future. Do you have any questions at this time for me? Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Amanda, I'm sorry that wasn't three minutes. <laughs> and there's, a, there's another piece of that that, that comes behind it. Um, and you can kind of see those five goal areas. Um, we have departments that are responsible for those, whether yes. that's teaching and learning or organizational effectiveness. Um, and so we have a balanced scorecard that we, we created last year um, that we'll tweak based upon these goal areas that measure certain things, um, that, that measures not only academic achievement uh, as the one that, that everybody's going to see with test scores, um, but you're also measuring other things. Um, you know, route times. Uh, there are simple things that we've looked at and tried to measure to help us determine because if you think you're being effective, how can you prove it? Um, what, what numerical uh, or what data can you use to show that you're, we're getting better and we're improving? And I think uh, part of this plan that's important is, is it's about getting better every day and continuous improvement um, and trying to sustain excellence. And so I think it gives us it gives us metrics to shoot for um, along the way, and uh, really thankful, for Mr. Wester, for your work on this, the board support and and staff and community partnering with us to make this happen because a lot of work has taken place to get us to this plan. Now there's a lot of work that has to happen to fulfill those obligations. Thank you. All right, Ms. Dodge. Good evening, board. I want to start by letting you know that we are in the throes of our audit for fiscal year 23. So um, Dr. Brown and I and um, Ms. Bryant will be having our entrance conference in the morning, and we will keep you posted um, as we get the results from, from that annual process. But that's always super fun to have that right in the middle of budget and year end and all the other stuff, you know, it's great. Um, but we'll look at finances, and we'll start with SPLOST, I believe. Um, we are up over every measure. The only measure which is kind of shocking that we're not above is the 12-month average. Our 12-month average has increased so much, it's, it's almost to 1.2 million now. It's at 1.195, which is amazing. So each month, it's just getting us closer and closer to 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 reaching that pinnacle where we get to 1.2 million and then 1.3 million for our 12-month average. 
So um, we're usually over that measurement, but we are not this month, and but we are all the rest, but the continued increased um, deposits are helping us help that, helping that 12 month average increase, which is great to see. And then and Anna, our, all, oh, I'm sorry. all of our splash revenue right now is going towards heroes. Yes. Yes. So 100% of all SPLOS collections are going yes. towards, towards that. completing heroes, but we are, I, I will never be able to say enough about Carol Daniel and how they have, what they've done and how quick they have built this amazing facility. Um, but we are, we are, if you look at where we are with that, I mean, we are, we're, we're on the downhill slide of completing that and the expenses from that. So it's a great, great, great thing to see. So once we're done with that, then we can just start putting that supplies money back into the coffers and, and doing some more things. Um, and if you want to look at our, our financial summary, you can see that at, with our revenue, we're at 84%. And at our expenditures, we're at 82%, even though we're at 75% of the year. Don't let that alarm you. Because if you actually, if you, you want to go back one more, maybe? There you go. Um, if you take out the open purchase orders, which is over $3 million, we actually are much more closer to, to the percentage of year completed. But again, we're getting close to that deadline where schools can, where they have to start putting in those last few purchase orders, which is April 25th. So they're starting to just, you know, really get that stuff in and start trying to spend the rest of their money. And so that, between that and the land purchase, we're, we're, we're a little higher, but again, if you if you want to go on to the next slide, you can see that each month the um, difference in where we were at this point last year is getting closer and closer. Last month we were we were at 1.5 million less than we were at this this time last year. This month we're at 1 million. So again, as the year goes and those expenditures start spreading over the months, then we get closer and closer to where we need to be. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Schofield. Dr. Brown and the board, it's, it's a great opportunity. We appreciate the opportunity to come and speak once again. Um, I wanted to say, um, you know, it's testing season, and in the operations department, uh, we've our leaders have taken it upon themselves to make sure we're prepared for that as well to help our students and we believe that we can be very actively involved in that uh, our transportation departments inform their drivers to encourage kids during those days has given out the, the testing schedule uh, mr. farmer has certainly worked with his staff and alerted them to those days and, and our school nutrition the same has gone forth there so very positive about things going on and just want to know that we're all collaborating to make our kids to work toward them being successful uh, without hesitation. That's, that's the key to that. Everybody's on board and everybody's working hard in that direction. I'm a, I'm a huge believer being a transportation person that, that bus drivers make a difference in kids. They make a huge difference. So we, we can encourage them getting off the bus and say, do a great job today and take your time and calm, be calm and collected. That's a group of kids that impact our test scores across the board. Uh, those kids that rely on transportation and, and many times those are kids that are really need, need that extra push. So we're going to try to do that and encourage, uh, we're going to teach our staff to encourage our students. Um, I believe the presentation tonight starts with Mr. Farmer. So I'm going to allow him to give us a project update? I believe it does. Yeah, I'm going to let him do a project update, and I'll come back with a few comments. Thank you, Ms. Schofield. Dr. Brown Board, I appreciate the opportunity always to come and just give you a monthly update on Heroes and also tonight some other projects that we will have going on uh, throughout the summer and a couple that are going on right now. I think the biggest takeaway from Heroes is that we, uh, over spring break, we received our 80% uh, completion from our fire marshal for the inspection. So that is 
great news, and we are very appreciative of the work that Carol Daniel, Southern A&E, and all our teams have done to accomplish that. And we just appreciate that partnership that we have with everyone. Uh, next, the um, permanent power has been uh, issued and hooked up. And uh, we are very proud of that because it is uh, early in our uh, timing to do that. That allows us to go ahead in the next couple of weeks to fire up the uh, all the MEPs and check those, make sure that they're operational and work out any kinks. Uh, some of the pictures that we have here you can see in the um, cafeteria, some of the lighting that's going in. Uh, just a typical mechanic room. This one's got the booster pump and um, risers in it if we can continue on. Just some typical kitchen equipment. Uh, some of the cabinetry that you'll be seeing in the classrooms coming up. Go ahead. Here again, just some uh, interior walls, doors uh, are starting or have already uh, started being hung and put in place. Go ahead. And this picture tells it all. The difference in the outside, where we're at, uh, the curbing, the gutter. Uh, you know, we're getting ready to start putting base coat down on some and finish that top layer of asphalt. Uh, very excited about that. It kind of brings the project all together. So here are some other projects that we have coming up in the summer. Uh, the graphics lab here at Empower. Uh, we uh, have already ordered the materials. And uh, there is uh, some lead time, so we work with our vendors to make sure that, you know, that is taken care of and accounted for. Uh, work schedule, we're starting in May, and uh, we look to be completed July 19th, if not sooner. Greenhouse uh, has been ordered. Um, you know, we, we're, we're excited that, to have the opportunity to do these projects uh, to make sure that they are complete for next school year and uh, excited for what the children are going to be seeing when they come back from from that summer break um, you know, the concrete foundation greenhouse is scheduled uh, to be complete in late may some of the things that are going on right now we do have some properties that need some demolition of some structures uh, the one at uh, the hayes property the uh, has been almost completed uh, the rain kind of caught us and another two days we'll have that completed so we appreciate like i said the opportunity to uh partner with uh you know, we were talking about the testing schedule and and those items and we uh met with our landscaping company today and i just appreciate the partnerships that we're developing with all our vendors and they are buying in to making sure that you know we are cognizant of what's going on inside our schools um, and not disturbing the children during instructional time so i'm very excited about that partnership with all our vendors and uh any questions all right, Dr. Brown Board, I appreciate it. Is the school going to be done and open in August? Yes, sir. All right. Good. <laughs> yes, sir, I, I will be there every day until every hour and make sure it's complete. So. I will say our campuses look great. If you've been around uh, East High, uh, Jackson County High, done some work over the holidays, uh, front campus at... Uh, Jackson County High looks excellent uh, if you have a chance to look at that. So uh, one other item we just want to kind of highlight tonight because we're going to, some work's going to begin, be, going to begin soon on our, uh, the stadium at it behind Empower. Uh, this is kind of the rendition of, of what that field is going to look like. I uh, wanted to bring the attention to the board that we have, uh, this is a joint project with the Board of Ed and the uh, county government, the Board of Commissioners, Board of Commissioners through the intergovernmental agreement signed last May uh, have agreed to pay for this project. Uh, so some of the updates on that, uh, at this time we're going to pull back on their track remodel and only do the turf field at this time. Uh, the track looks like it's got a few more years of life in it. We brought some professionals in. Uh, the comment that stuck with me is, this track's in better shape than 90% of the tracks across the state. So when I was t given that comment from a professional who does this work, uh, he, he informed us that for a, a minimal amount, he can restripe and patch some places on our track. Uh, he believes uh, that each year they, there'll be some patching that will have to be completed uh, but and, and monitored, and there'll be some other work that's got to be done at this stadium. But... Uh, we believe it's in the best interest for the county as well 
to maybe hold off on the track work at this time, but we are going to move forward with the turf field. Uh, you'll notice the turf field is outfitted with, uh, of course, the football field with uh, soccer. And it's also got lacrosse markings on it. So it's, uh, uh, of course, is a sports on our west side, but certainly will grow uh, in popularity across this area. Um, that's kind of where we are. Any questions about that? Uh, timing, uh, we, you know, we're still working on that. Uh, uh, the original timing was to try to begin within the next two or three weeks. Uh, we have begun tearing down of trees on the opposite, on the visitor side of that track. Uh, they're gone. If you if you go out there, there there are no more trees. Uh, so uh, they've been working on that this week. Uh, we feel like within the next three weeks they'll begin uh, the process. You know, the due date is, is August. They're trying to get it completed by the end of the summer. So, yeah. Yeah, we hope so. We hope so also. Uh, we'll bring the other groups in. Uh, this is a project that we purchased through co-op purchasing through a, a state contract. Uh, we, will, we will put the money forward through a PO, and the county will reimburse us for these projects. Okay? So this is the same kind of turf field that we've got. It is. So this is the 2024 model of all of the turf fields at the other schools. Uh, each year there's a little bit of an upgrade to their, their, their fields. Uh, we certainly want to take advantage of the new technologies that are out there. I'm, I don't know all those and get in the weeds on that, uh, but those were the questions we were asking along the way. So try to do a comparable field for sure. Uh, but a 20, 2024 model of the comparable, yeah. <laughs> Latest model, that's correct. Pat, I just want to give some kudos on top of what Anna was saying earlier, and uh, Dr. Brown mentioned about uh, where our splice dollars are going. And I think a big part of that is that we can pay cash for these buildings because of the work that you've done for us. Well, I appreciate so, that. You know what, we, I, we appreciate I think it's the work you. of a lot of folks. Well, a lot of folks done. You're we got bringing, a lot of good things going on. So we appreciate you. Any other questions related to this or other projects? We have a lot going on in the operations world uh, between now and uh, the beginning of next year. So uh, our guys are working hard. Thank you. So we do have a need to go into executive session. If I can have a motion, do so, please. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh.
All right. If I can have a motion to return from executive session, please. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we do need to vote on personnel. Um, and I need to do two lists. First list. I'll make a motion we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the second list. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I note that Ms. Wheeler and Mr. Sanders abstained from that vote. And we stand adjourned. Thank you.